Thank you, Jesus. Um, how many of you know what we've done over since 2002? Okay. Wow, what a journey, huh? <laughs> okay. Um, David's going to start us in a prayer, and then we're just going to tell you a little history about us, and then we're going to teach you how to spring clean your temple. And Father God, we thank you for today, Lord. Just thank you for your shalom. Thank you for your, uh, your peace, Lord, the, uh, the basis of our, our, um, our ministry. We just uh, thank you for all that you've done, the, the, the uh, witness that you've given us, that uh, we can go out and teach others just how to overcome sickness, overcome a lot of things that are going on in our lives. So bless us today, Lord. Open the hearts and minds of each and every listener, Lord, that, uh, that they would receive what you have for them. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, in 2001, at the end of the year, uh, David was working outside of the home, mm. and he started to lose ability in his legs. His legs started to just buckle. So one day he was coming down the stairs, and he just started to shake, lost his balance. This happened a few times. What we did um, after, the, after the weekend, we thought, well, you know what? This sounds neurological. I want to point out to you, we are not doctors. Um, we are highly educated. <laughs> and how did we learn this? What university did we go to? School of Hard Knocks. <laughs> we really did. We were thrown into this. Um, David went to the hospital, and they told us that they found a lesion on the C7 portion of his spine. It was either MS or cancer. Go home and wait eight weeks, and we'll let you know what it is. Well, I must be impatient because I didn't want to wait eight weeks. Um, I think somebody mentioned that this morning. <laughs> and so we started to pray, and we asked God. In the hospital, when he was going through eight hours of testing, I asked God if there's anything I can do that will help my husband get well. If you tell me what it is, I'll do it. Now, you have to be careful what you pray for. <laughs> we... Um, he instantly gave me Psalm 41.3. I will raise him from his bed of illness. Now, I didn't know that verse, all right? And so I looked it up, and when I realized what it said, I had a choice. I believed God. I knew it was him speaking to me, all right? Well, we left the hospital with no diagnosis. He was in a walker. The, the MS was progressing very quickly. Yeah, one week's time. I went from, from no symptoms at all to being in a walker in one week's time. Right. Less than a week. And so what happened is we um, went home, and five days later, no, four days later, the Hallelujah lifestyle came at us. It was a vegan lifestyle, and it came at us in five different ways. Well, <laughs> I knew God was speaking to us. I read the material. I studied it for two weeks. Um, two months, and I went, you know what, I don't want to do this, <laughs> but it really makes sense. So that is our beginning. By the way, he has no MS symptoms in his body any longer. And praise that, the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. It took, it took one year of a real regime to overcome that disease. We are here um, two years later, we opened a lifestyle center in Plant City. We did that for 13 years and did not want to renew for another 10. Okay, so we closed that business in February. We still are what we're called health ministers. So we minister to people all over the world. People call us and so that's kind of where we are today. I want to add a little bit to the, uh, the beginning of that. Uh, anybody in here have arthritis? Show of hands. Oh, you're not supposed Achy to do joints. that. Oh, is that later on? <laughs> <laughs> but just a lot of these ailments that, uh, that we experience every day in our lives is because of what we do with our bodies. Right. And uh, I got rid of not only the MS, but before that, I got rid of the arthritis. I had really bad in my hands and feet. Okay, days I couldn't walk. If I was to shake your hand, please don't squeeze. They just hurt so bad, badly. And um, acid reflux, just all these things that are going on in our bodies we don't have to experience 
it's because of what we're doing to ourselves. All these things are not God's design. All right, so we're here today. I, I was so excited about this PowerPoint because I think you're going to learn some things today. It's focused different than what we teach regularly. Today is going to be focused on the Daniel diet and how good it is for you. <laughs> Yay. <Okay. laughs> All right, so um, what can you expect? Um, fasting requires great self-discipline. Is that not true? Self-control. You got to control all those temptations that jump out of the refrigerator. Um, and self-denial, which says no to our natural appetites in order to say yes to God. It's a discipline, all right? Um, let's see if I'm good at this. <laughs> I am technically challenged. This happens everywhere I go. Oh, it's not on here. Okay. Um, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. 1 Corinthians 2.16, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? We know that, right? We hear it preached to us every week. But do we take that in a matter of reverence? Do we look at it and go, God, we, we really are. We're made in an incredible way. We're made in his image. So that, that says something, don't you think? This is the tabernacle in the wilderness made by Moses. Uh, take a look at it. Look at some of the, the intricate details. We're studying that in Torah. All right? There's, there's ribs and sides to the, to the walls, okay? Um, it was formed as a protection, okay? There were all the articles. I thought it was so neat that Nicholas this morning brought up the items of the tabernacle. I mean, tell me that's not God's design, all right? The tabernacle means tent. It's a place of dwelling or sanctuary. Exodus 25, 8, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. The rib, the side, or literally of the body, or figuratively of a door. Okay, so that's what that means. Here's a little drawing. Whoops, they warned me about this. <laughs> this is a drawing of the tabernacle. Okay, the wilderness tabernacle was erected exactly one year after Passover, 2450 B.C., it was a mobile tent with portable furniture, which Nicholas went over, that the people traveled with and set up wherever they pitched camp. Today, we are that portable ta tabernacle. We go all over the place. We're the light of God. We're the ones that are supposed to uh, draw people to us because Yeshua should be shining through us. All right? So we go. We're, we're on the move. But God is with us in better than a clutch better than a cloud. So look at the parts. Look at the different parts of, of the tabernacle. And the one we're going to focus on is the Holy of Holies, because that's where we need to be. There was three things that were put into the um, tabernacle, um, in, into the Ark of the Covenant. There was the um, manna, the bread of the wilderness, which was to be a witness to future generations that God, prov God provided for his people in the wilderness. But what did the people do in the wilderness when that manna was given to them? What did they do? They complained. Oh, this manna, I'm so sick of it. You know, when we were in Egypt, we had meat, okay? Um, there's an inter interesting verse in the Bible uh, escapes me what it is. Um, but when God got sick and tired of it, he says, you want meat? I'm going to rain down some quail. It's going to be knee deep. All right? And the, um, the very next verse talks about disease. You know, now I'm not saying meat causes disease. All right? But it's interesting that that's what he said in his word. The next thing was Aaron's rod. 
The rod represented God's comfort and protection. An interesting thing about the rod was that the people, again, were grumbling and complaining that Aaron should not have been the leader. You remember that? And so God had all of the tribes put in their sticks into the Ark of the Covenant. And to prove a point, only Aaron's rod budded and flowered. So it was indicative that, you know, this is my chosen man. You know, when I think about what Dave and I do, um, <laughs> we would never have figured this is what our message would be. This is how God would use us. Um, it is not a popular message. We get made fun of all the time. <laughs> uh, we go out to lunch with people, and what do they say to me? Just give her a philodendron. That's all she eats anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I get made fun of a lot. But, you know, it's okay, all right? Now, the Ten Commandments represents um, God's word to us. He only gave us ten, all right? And we struggle, right? We struggle with this. Um, and one would think it's odd that the three articles representing the sinfulness of man would be held in the Ark of the Covenant. But you know what? God provided, all right? He, there's a covering. There's actually a covering that, so when he looks down on that mercy seat, he doesn't see that sin anymore. And it represents what Jesus did in the future. Um, see, that's where his provision came in. And I just think him showing us that he, there's a lot of symbolism in the Bible. And I just think it's incredible that he has provided for us in that way. Okay, um, I think I have to hit this twice. <laughs> All right, the heart. Look at the Torah scroll. Um, it kind of resembles a heart. I'm setting the stage for how fearfully and wonderfully we are made. Jeremiah 31, 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. He's given it to us, okay? We're privileged. Um, and it's representative of the heart. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you some interesting things about the heart. The heart beats 72, minute, 72 times a minute. 100,000 times a day, 3,600,000 times a year, 25 billion times during your lifetime. These are some scriptures. Um, you can watch the, the, the tape later if you want these scriptures. But Luke 16, 15 says he knows our heart. That can be a good thing or it can be a bad, <laughs> okay? But hopefully it's a good thing. First Peter, we're to have exceeding joy. Uh, Colossians 3.15, peace. He wants peace for us. Matthew 11.29, we're to be lowly and humble. Romans 5.5, 5, love by Ruach, his Holy Spirit. And Proverbs 3.5, which is my life verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. When we started this lifestyle... We had our own understanding of what healthy was. Um, I learned a lot. This lifestyle center that we had, we had 8 to 10 to 12 people come twice a month and live with us. And we, a lot of these people were very, very sick. We're going to give you some examples of that shortly. And we got to, they got to learn a lot about how to take care of the temple. Your kitchen faucet would, be, would need to be turned on full force for 45 years to equal the amount of blood pumped by the heart over your entire lifetime. Isn't that amazing? The word heart is mentioned 725 times in the Old Testament and 105 times in the New Testament. I think the Lord's telling us we need to take care of our heart. 
The first study showing uh, the benefits of a vegetarian diet was Daniel. It, you know, there's a, it's called the law of first mention. Anytime something's mentioned first in the Bible, I think God's trying to get our attention. It's important. But we don't pay attention sometimes. You know, we get busy. Life. <laughs> okay. um, a vegetarian is 19% less likely to die of heart disease. Smoking makes the risk of heart attack 200 to 400% more than a non-smoker. It literally sucks the oxygen out of your cells and organs. And we're going to teach you why that's so important. The inventor of the heart stint approached numerous companies for funding and was rejected. It was funded by the owner of Fuddruckers Restaurant, whom we, he met by chance, by God incidents, I think, on a golf course. Now, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the lungs. Adults have 22,000 breaths every 24 hours. If lungs were opened up flat, they would cover the size of a tennis court. Isn't that something? <laughs> Each person can expect to breathe in 45 pounds of dust in their lifetime. Did you ever see what a dust mite looks like? <laughs> it's kind of a scary thought. 70% um, of waste is eliminated through the lungs. So we have to breathe in and breathe out, and you should deep breathe. Children laugh 300 times a day, and look at our ratio. We need to laugh more, so I'm going to do that shortly. <laughs> okay. Proverbs 17.22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. All right. Deuteronomy 5.29, Oh, that there was such a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments, always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Genesis 2, 7, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Look at the way the lungs and the heart are in the, in the body cavity. I think it's very interesting. Remember, we're made in his image. Here is a picture of, of a rib cage and some body organs. The lungs is uh, Ruach, Strong's 7307, meaning breath, wind, spirit. The ribs is Strong 6763. Um, to say la, and the shoulders hold up the structure. All right? Now look at how the lungs and the heart are inside that protective rib cage. Just like in the wilderness tabernacle, the ribs of the walls held everything, all those precious items in the wilderness temple. When he made us, all of those body parts were protected in those ribs. Here is a beautiful drawing I did. <laughs> okay. um, it kind of goes back to your stick people day. <laughs> See the soldiers on shoulders? <laughs> um, the ribs protecting everything, and then the holy place and the holy of holies. And then there's the seat of procreation. This is God's design for the original tabernacle, and now we're the tabernacle, and he designed us exactly the same way. The shoulders hold up the gate, and we carry heavy loads. The heart of Yahweh is his Torah, he placed it in the chest cavity, protected by the ribs. And I read this one before. So comparing the two tabernacles, the 12 tribes of Israel camped around the tabernacle under the Mosaic law, and later the 12 apostles under the dispensation of grace. Moses' tabernacle had three coverings, goat skin, ram skin dyed red, and badger skin. 
Man has 33 vertebrae, one for each day that Moses dwelled in the mount after seeing the vision of creation, or one vertebrae for each year that Messiah dwelled upon the earth. He uses numbers. They're very important. 24 ribs, 12 on each side, representing tribes. The, it's the um, old apostles and then the new, new ones. Our temple has three layers, skin, tissue, and muscle. Pastor Nick says it's time to do a Daniel fast. Now, I really laughed when it was announced, because what was your reaction? <laughs> Pastor Nick, you were the only one. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> But you know, we, we've been coming here, I believe it's since 2009, and we started this lifestyle in 2002, January. And it's really, this is a time, uh, we, we all are human, right? We are, we're human, okay? And when you start thinking of giving up certain foods, oh my goodness, it's really hard. <laughs> You know, the cup we're, of coffee. We're just so resistant to change, aren't we? We are. We're resistant to change. Okay. Ideally, during this time, we should spend most of the waking part of our fast praying, studying, and reflecting on God's word. This is a time when we can clean. We're going to start to clean the temple. And many things in the Bible talk about that we have to pray and fast. This is an opportunity that we do a couple times a year to actually be able to clean the temple. It needs cleaning, and we're going to show you some things that muddy us up. Um, we should pray with purpose. You all have different purposes in your life. We can pray for Israel. We can pray for our congregation. We need to pray for our pastor. We need to pray for our friends, okay? But we all have personal needs, too. And this is a great time for you to hear from God because when you fast and pray, guess what? You are cleaning up the brain tissue too. So you will hear from God better. Okay? That's right. I have testimony over here. That's right. Um, if you're unhealthy, we advise that you inform your doctor of your upcoming fast if you have something major going on in your body. Okay? Daniel 10.3, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, and neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. 21 days is really isn't a long time, okay? And we're going to give you some helpful hints on <laughs> how to do that. Um, you want to read? Um, we have nine amazing symptoms, uh, systems that need to be, well, actually, there's probably nine symptoms, too. If I asked you for a laundry list of how many symptoms you had, it'd probably go into the 40s, okay? Ours did. You know, it really did. Okay, we have a skeletal system. We have 206 bones in our body. But sometimes those bones get something called osteoporosis. That is actually a, a drying up of the bones. It's because your body is in an acidic state. Um, these bones keep you moving, give your body shape. Some people would rather have different bones, I think, um, and protects the body's organs. <laughs> um, the circulatory and cardiovascular system, it carries oxygen to all parts of the body, digestive. This is an area where a lot of people have problems. They, they're having to take in acids. Um, they, they have a burning sensation. Um, they, their food seems to just sit there. It doesn't seem to digest. And again, there's reasons for that. Endocrine, it, this makes your hormones and chemicals that help your body systems to work. You know, I could do a PowerPoint on every one of these systems. And eventually, we're going to be doing that. Um, but it's, it's, we're just touching on it today. 
the muscular system. We have 600 muscles which produce movement, maintains posture. Cells need to contract regularly, and your heart is a muscle, so it's important that we take care of that heart muscle. Nervous, nervous system, it sends messages from one body part to another, mainly your brain and spinal cord. When David was diagnosed with MS, he had a lesion in his spinal cord. And what happened was, the first question we asked the doctor was, well, why can't you do surgery? You know, we're thinking the world's way. Not that surgery's bad, there's time for surgery, okay? But the, the lesion was so thick that they couldn't do the, um, the surgery because they said if they missed it, he would be paralyzed. Now, MS could put him in a wheelchair, but it would take longer for that to happen. But if, he, if they tried to do the surgery, it would not have worked well, is, is what they told us. The urinary and renal systems, this made up of the kidneys and bladder. Now, this is where your waste eliminates. So if those systems aren't working right, you're not going to work right, or at the very least, you're going to have discomfort. Respiratory, hey, you got to breathe. <laughs> you have to breathe, right? Have any of you ever lost your breath? It's very scary. You choke. It's extremely scary. We need the breath. Uh, reproductive system. This church does this very well. <laughs> You know, there's something to be said for your leader. You know, you, the leader starts at the top, and then you're supposed to, you know, follow his suit. So go out and multiply. <laughs> okay. Doesn't matter if you're 70. By the way, if you go on this diet permanently, you might be like Sarah and Abraham. <laughs> All right. Tools for spring cleaning. Okay, we're going to mop up some emotions. If you have stinking thinking, not a good thing. Okay, not a good thing. Zig Ziglar told us that. We're going to flush your system's poisons out. We have, we have toxins. How many of you know what toxins are? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how, how we're doing. Um, just kind of yell out what, is a to what kind of things are toxic to the body. What was that? Chemicals. 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 Sugar. Sugar. Preservatives. Preservatives. White flour. White flour. Dyes. Dyes. Yes, us vain ladies use them. And I may have a solution. I saw something online. They're, they're working on this. Night Night, um, it's not really. It can be toxic to some people. Artificial sweeteners. GMOs. You guys know. You know these things. This is awesome. We have an educated crew this time. <laughs> awesome. Um, you're going to scrub and clean your intestines and colon. Doesn't that sound fun? <laughs> now, the medical world has a test for that that does that. But you know what? If you eat clean, you maybe need less of that. Because if you eat clean, you stay clean. Okay? And that takes fiber and water, are the two main things. You're going to bathe our body with nutrients that will build the body. And the Daniel fast does that. All right? Okay, we're going to talk about healthy cells. I'm going to read that. You can't read it. We have over 100 trillion living cells in our body. 300 million are duplicating every minute. Think about that. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your cells make up your tissues. Your tissues make up your organs. And your organs make up your body's systems. So we just went over what all those nine systems were. And that's just part of it. Just there's, I think there's still things we haven't discovered yet. Your cells make up are made up of what you eat and drink. Didn't Pastor Nick say we are what we eat and he saw a donut walking by? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we see Twinkies, we see, we see all kinds of things. <laughs> um, your cells are living 
and they create new, healthier cells every time you eat the Genesis 129 diet. Doesn't mean you have, that's the only thing you should eat, okay? Just more of it. Every one of us can improve on how much of the Genesis 129 foods can nourish the body. Your cells need five things, oxygen, water, nutrients, waste elimination, and freedom from poisons. It's really important for us to function properly. There's a little food pyramid. I bet it doesn't look like your food pyramid or the government's food pyramid. <laughs> your body is like an onion. It has layers. The health benefits of the onion prevent cardiovascular disease, um, dissolve blood clots. Is this taught out there to us? It really isn't. If you go to a nutritionist, they don't tell you these kind of things. You know, so I, I know God has a plan for every single thing that he has created. Um, and he has purpose for everything that he created. Lower the risk of developing cancer. Um, fight against infections. Improve living function. Um, I can't even read it. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, help de de detoxify the body. Lower the triglycerides. A lot of us have problems with triglycerides. All right? And that affects your cholesterol levels. Uh, reduce blood pressure. Just as an onion has layers, we have layers of symptoms of disease. You want to talk about your like arthritis and the things that disappeared. Yeah, the, um, like I was saying before, the, uh, I had arthritis really bad in my hands and feet, uh, acid reflux. Acid reflux was the first one to go away because my body was no longer acidic. And when we understand, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but when we understand the acidity in our body and how, how the plants grow, how we grow, how just everything is on that pH scale we learned in school, that um, when you get your body back in line with the way God made you, then your body can heal. Uh, week two, the acid reflux was gone. At 30 years old, what did the doctor tell you? Well, I went to the doctor and um, <laughs> uh, because I started developing pain in my hands. And, and the doctor says, uh, you know, asked me what I was there for. And I told him. And he says, um, I asked him, I said, Doc, why is this happening? I'm only in my early 30s. And he says, well, Dave, you're getting older. You have to expect these things. 30 years old. Now, I've talked to a lot of people through this ministry, and a lot of people have heard that same message. You know, we're getting older. We have to expect these things. You what know, about that? That's, that's not an answer. What about that lady that came to the center? Your favorite story? Oh, my favorite story. Okay. <laughs> She's finally letting me tell it. The, uh, <clears throat> we had I'm kind of like Tikva. <laughs> little little 79-year-old lady, and uh, she was German. She lived in Maine. And she calls Sherry and asks her about, because she's seen the advertisement for the center. And she says, do you think you can help me? And Sherry says, you know, talk to her for a while. And she says, sure. And, um, you know, you're, we're fearfully and wonderfully made, right? So she told her husband about it. And he says, mm, yeah, that sounds like a cult to me. You, you, you can't go there. <laughs> Eating so, vegetables is a cult. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> she calls Sherry again and talked to her for a while. And she decided to come for two weeks. Hmm. Okay. So I pick her up at the airport. She's very, very frail. I mean, they bring her out in a wheelchair. I get her into the van finally, get her luggage, get her back to the house, get her in the house. I mean, she, she could hardly walk. She was in so much pain. So this is Sunday afternoon. That's when our program started. Tuesday morning, we're sitting down. Uh, we're going to have devotions in the morning. And I see her down there rubbing her hands. And I remember the days of rubbing, oh, just, just to try to get them to feel better. And she and I were the only one at the table. So I asked her, I says, uh, your hands bothering you, hon? She says, actually, they feel a little bit better. Now, remember, this lady could hardly walk. That afternoon, we, we always take a, uh, a driveway walk around the circle out front. And she manages to walk around once. The next meal, she got out there, she walked around twice. 
Now, we had a uh, 900-foot driveway down to the road. By the end of the two weeks, she's walking up and down with everybody else, keeping up with them and feeling great. And so that Friday, I take her back to the airport. She no longer has to get in the wheelchair. And she, kind of like in the movies, guys, she throws her arms around me. She says, I think he liked that. <laughs> she says, thank you so much. It's so good to be able to walk again without pain in two weeks. Okay. Two weeks, people. Two weeks later, her husband calls. He says, thank you for giving me my wife back. You know, that's what kept us going, guys. Not this day-to-day -day -day thing where you don't see a whole lot, even though typically we see results in, in three days. That's usually the turnaround. You're doing the detox, you start feeling better. But Not that at was a, first. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, you know, that's what kept us going, is right. those kind of testimonies. And they happen a lot. That's just one example. We have hundreds and hundreds of examples, including cancers, um, diabetes. Um, it, you name the disease, and we probably worked with it. We didn't personally work with it, but even AIDS. Uh, it was another um, group of people that had done that. It was two doctors, and the one doctor overcame AIDS just by doing this at, at a really aggressive level. Um, David had a gait when he walked, when he got out of the walker, when he would walk, I don't want to demonstrate, you can demonstrate. He had to throw his hip and, th and drag his foot, it's called drop foot syndrome. He had that for, I don't know, months? No, a year, almost a yeah, year. Yeah, it was uh, seven, eight months before, yeah. before that one went. Yeah, and seven months was the first time he saw any difference in the MS symptoms. So why did we stay on this lifestyle for seven months because all the other things were disappearing. It was kind of like a fast, but all these things were disappearing. So we knew that onion was one layer after another. The sicknesses were going away, and the MS must have been a lower piece of the onion rings, okay, not fried. I think if you stop putting the toxins in and then give your body something to work with so it can rebuild, See, with, with the MS, the, the doctor told us, he says, Sherry asked him, what's the prognosis of the MS? And he says, well, you're going to go on drugs. He says, eventually, you'll start losing body functions, and eventually, it'll take your life. And because that was the, the scenario that they saw all the time, okay, people not willing to change or knowing about change. So eating the standard American diet, yes, you're going to keep on getting weaker and weaker. The body functions aren't going to be there, and you're going to go downhill, and it's going to take your life. But if you're willing to change, you can build that body back up, renew cells that are not renewing uh, at the normal rate of what, what you've always had, and wonderful things can happen. All right. One year, all MS symptoms were gone. That's a hallelujah. I mean, that's... Okay, so what can you expect from this Daniel fast? Well, <laughs> it's been our experience to watch people um, blame the newfound healthier eating habits as being the cause of their symptoms. Oh, I went on that diet and it made me sick. They're not understanding what's happening inside. Your, your stored up toxins are going, they're, they're hiding in fat cells is what they do. All right? which can turn into cancer later down the road. So what happens is those toxins make you feel sick when they're released into the bloodstream. So when you go on a Daniel fast, how many of you feel wonderful the first few days? Anybody feel wonderful? Dave and I do. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Low blow, yep. <laughs> um, when a healthier diet change is made, your body rejoices because you're putting in what God really designed for us to eat. Um, your body will immediately start this cleansing process. When people were coming to the Lifestyle Center, I'm not kidding you, within 12 hours, once they gave up the coffee, all animal products, all white things, white flour, sugar, uh, salt, Okay, all those things, they would start to
to feel really bad. And they went, man, I paid all that money <laughs> to feel terrible. I thought this was a vacation. Okay, well, it wasn't a, it was a healthy vacation. <laughs> One of the biggest things, guys, is sugar. Yeah, we're going to got a whole I'll slide you, on that. If you have arthritis, if you have heart disease, you have so many things, um, are, the inflammation is involved. You know, if you've got, a, got an injury, the worst thing you can do is put sugar in your, in your body because it's going to inflame that area and give you no peace. Some of the symptoms that you're going to experience, lethargy, you are going to feel so tired. Okay, as those toxins come out, you just want to sleep all the time. You know, it, it's, it's amazing that, that your body, um, when, when the toxins start to come out, it just makes you so sleepy. It was hard for Sherry to teach classes, you know, the first couple of days <laughs> because people want to sleep. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. It's very, it's very discouraging to stand up here and see people nod off, you know, so, you know, you don't want Pastor Nick to see that either, you know, because <laughs> I can see every one of you up here. It's really cool. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, headaches, that is very common, especially it's associated usually with caffeine, whether it's soda drinks or coffee. Um, when you give up the caffeine right away, uh, I, I have some, what are we doing, Daniel Fast in two weeks? Is that right, Pastor? Okay, I suggest, okay, anybody that drinks coffee or does colas, that you start weaning yourself now and you will not get the headaches. So if you drink two cups of coffee a day, Go down to one and three quarters for a couple days, then one and a half for a couple days. By the time the two weeks is done, you won't have the headache, the withdrawal symptoms. Okay? Um, <laughs> bloating and gas. Yes, this happens. <laughs> okay. um, your digestion system is being cleansed. So what's going to happen is it's going to stir things up. All right? And it can be very embarrassing. All right, so be aware that it's going to happen. So if you're in other people's company, uh, you can be aware, okay? Um, digestive issues, many, many things. Pe people are told all the time, don't eat this vegetable, don't eat that vegetable. Um, it's not good for you. If you take certain medications, they'll tell you greens are bad for you, right? And there, it, it can make... The drug they give you ineffective is what the problem is, okay? Um, a, a better choice would be not to have to go on the drug to begin with, <laughs> okay? So um, well, that a lot would of, be a, a goal. lot of times the, the vegetables, the green vegetables, will do the job that, of the drug that they're, they're giving you, right. which I won't point out which ones. But um, um, so they have to monitor you if you're going to eat these green veggies. Right. Um, I have had testimonies of people who went to the doctor and said, no, this is my diet, so you need to adjust my medication to my diet, and it works very well. Um, acne. Now, usually 70-year-old people don't have acne, but when you detox, you can, and it depends. It's a skin condition. Usually, it's, it's indicative of digestion problems. So um, don't be surprised if you break out with some little facial marks. <laughs> okay. Don't be surprised by emotions. You can experience every one of those emotions. Um, happy would be good, but it doesn't usually happen for a few days. Um, you can be sad. You can even get a little depressed, uh, grumpy. I can tell you for a fact that people get grumpy when you take food away. Even before you start the fast, some of you are like, oh, no. <laughs> it's that time of year again. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> excitement doesn't come until you start feeling better. All right? But all these emotions can go. It, it's just amazing what gets drummed up just by changing what you're putting into the temple. Um, but congratulations, you know, when people, when people would be at the center, what we would do is, you know, they'd be, you know, grumbling and complaining about what was happening to them, and I'd go, well, praise the Lord, you're on your way to wellness, <laughs> okay? Um, they didn't really appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so where do toxins come from? You guys are pretty educated. You, you told us. Um, 
The, the, the medications, we're not anti-medication, so to speak. <laughs> um, what we are is that we try not to go on any by keeping ourselves healthy. Now, there are certain things that, that you're going to need them for. But an interesting thing in Revelations 18.23 says, the nations will be deceived by sorcery. When you do the Greek translation, the nations will be deceived by pharmakia. We run to the doctor for every kind of ache and pain, and the average 60-year-old is on 14 medications. David and I are in those years, and we take nothing. Okay? In fact, I got in an accident one time, and uh, I had to go to the ambulance. I split my head open. And, um, and Dave, you know what? You know, he's my hero. He's really my hero. We were supposed to go out to dinner. I got in the accident, and the, um, the ambulance comes. And God put a paramedic in, right in front of me. My car spun out of control. A storm came out of nowhere, and my car spun out of control, and I was whipping around. And as I, I looked to the, the southbound traffic, and there was no guardrails, and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, please don't let me kill anybody, and I'll see you in a couple minutes. That's what I said. I had enough time to say that. All of a sudden, I wake up. Now, I don't know if I blacked out. I don't, I don't know what happened to me. But I woke up, and I look, and I'm like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I'm still here. You know? And the, um, this kid jumps out of a car in front of me, runs over, and he looks at me, and he goes, Lady, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> he goes, You were spinning like this, and you missed everyone. And I sat there, and to be honest with you, I think I was in shock. All right. I went like this, I felt a draft, and when I went like, held my hand up, it was covered in blood. I had a hole in my head. I must have hit, I think, the belt buckle. So I had to go to the hospital. I was not fond of that idea. <laughs> okay. um, so we, he was supposed to meet me for dinner. And I have this image of he, he arrives just as they're taking me feet first out of the car. And I have this image of him running. You know, he's running to me. And he grabs my hand, and the medics are trying to pull us apart. <laughs> now, the, the, the medic um, in the ambulance said to me, Sherry, uh, what, what medications are you on? I said, I'm not on any. Well, what, you know, what diseases do you have? I don't have any that I know of. And he goes, ma'am, you're 53 years old. I says, well, yes, I know that. He goes, who's the president? I go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I didn't want to know. <laughs> you know, but it was, it was amazing, okay? The hospital did the same thing. They are not used to seeing um, healthy people. So they, they, they were shocked that a 53-year-old woman didn't have diagnosed disease or was on any medication. The GMOs um, are really, if you want to know more, just type in Monsanto, okay? People, th this, that is not a good company. Um, they're, they're doing things to, our, to God's food that should never be done. And what's happening is that it's hurting our temples, and we don't realize it. This could be a whole five-hour presentation. Um, your makeup. Your nails, not that we ladies, we like to look good, all right? Um, just take it easy. <laughs> Try to find more natural products. Um, use organic hair dyes if you do that. Um, chemicals is, is rampant. It's in our food. I want you to become a label reader. If you can't pronounce it, don't put it in your mouth. That's a good rule of thumb, just if you can't pronounce it, you know? Um, Chemtrails, that can be a big thing, and just air pollution. You know, one of the videos that we watch uh, talks about that reading, uh, reading labels, and they're going down the aisles reading all this stuff, right? Mm. Some better than others, you know, not a problem. And she gets down to the vegetables. Hmm, let's look at this apple. Hmm. <laughs> There's 
no ingredient list. What do I do? You know? So, but of course, that's the best thing for you. <laughs> okay. What's the first thing you see about these two body types? <laughs> I don't know if you can see it clearly, but the left one is made up of a lot of burgers, french fries, um, a lot of cooked food. I think his whole head is french fries. And, <laughs> and that's where it is. It's head hunger. <laughs> you know, you can make nice french fries. You can cut them up and, and bake them and put a little salt on them, a little oil, and you've got healthier french fries, all right? Um, the healthy guy, not just the body shape, but look at the color difference. God's food is colorful. It's beautiful. Interesting fact, when you gain a pound of fat, your body makes seven new miles of blood vessels, which means your body has to work harder to pump blood through all those new vessels. Think about that. There was a, a display at the, um, the Science Museum a few years ago. It was a bodies exhibit, and they showed that. And I was fascinated. And there was a lot of med students there. Uh, but I remember seeing that so that as the person got larger, these, it, you have to sustain your life. Leviticus 17.11 says the life's in the blood. You have to sustain that new tissue with the blood. So that means your heart's going to have to work harder, all right? Addictions. Can anybody tell me, like, um, what is the first intimacy in the Bible? Most people are going to say when Adam and Eve came together, but that's not it. Think about it. It's when God created Adam, and this formless, I mean, this, this formed, lifeless body was on the ground, and God put his breath, mouth over God and blew life into him. That is the first intimacy in the Bible, the law of first mention. Now think about addictions. How many are involved with the mouth? Most of them except shopping. <laughs> we shop for food. Yeah, that's, that's a legal one. <laughs> so we're not going to go into all of them. But this fast can be a good time, if you have any, to get rid of those addictions. This is one of the biggest ones. Probably this and coffee. <laughs> um, but sugar addiction. When you eat sugar, we like it. Then what happens? We crave it. We want more. You know, there's something to be said for, like, those Oreo cookies. <laughs> they put chemicals in those Oreo cookies that make your brain want you to eat more. So and it's boy, almost... And boy, does it work. Hmm? And boy, does it work. <laughs> yes, it does. You have to tell them about the cruise. <laughs> I, I make this too long, but... No, it's got to be short. <laughs> We took our daughter on her first cruise uh, when she was 19 for her birthday. And uh, the three of us went. And uh, it was during flu season. Now, flu season is when? Usually October through February or so, because of all the sugars that we in, in, engage in in all that time. Uh, so we went down for our cruise. We got down to the dock. And there's all kinds of people. Ah, chew, hey, Joe, how you doing? <laughs> you know, um, all this stuff going on. And this is before they had all the sanitizers around the ships. And uh, so Sherry very wisely says, you know, with all the sickness going around, make sure that we grab a, a napkin or a sleeve or something to pick up the utensils that everybody else has just grabbed because we didn't want to get sick. And But our immune system was working well enough. We knew we probably wouldn't. Okay, so... If you've ever been on a cruise, you know everything that you do is at the other end of the ship. I think they do that on purpose so you get a little bit of exercise. <laughs> okay. the, uh, you go down to eat, you go play bingo. You go down to eat, you go, play, go watch a show. It's just back and forth on the ship. And in the middle of the ship, unless you go down on the um, uh, casino deck, which we didn't want to go because of the, the smoke and all that, but it would be the Lido deck, and that's where all the food is. So... Uh, Sherry and Amber like to talk a lot, so they're walking in front of me. I'm walking behind, and we walk through the Lido deck, and I, out of my peripheral vision, I see something jumping around. So 
There's some chocolate chip cookies over there. Just calling my name. Keep so in mind, kind of, he had not had any sugar in his body for two years at this point. So they're talking away, and I'm eating a cookie behind him, you know. That was so good. So uh, <laughs> the next time we walked by, which wasn't too long after that, I grabbed two cookies. You know, I'm munching away. They still didn't know about it. The next well, time I walked by, I grabbed five cookies. So now I've had eight cookies, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, I get sick. And Sherry looks at me, Dave, what did you do? <laughs> I knew. I had, I had to confess, you know. I knew. So what, it, what I had done with all that sugar is shut my immune system down, okay? Now invited all this garbage into my body, okay? Where before I had this, this defense mechanism there where my immune system was taking care of everything. I spent four miserable days on that cruise, okay? We had fun. These, these two are out. <laughs> party until who knows what hour at night, you know, dancing and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> but see, it is that addictive. He hadn't had any for two years, and he attempted it. And, you know, he attempted it and, and suffered the consequences of it. Um, you know, I think there are natural sugars you can do. I make all kinds of things, cheesecake with no cheese in it. I make, but I use dates and honey and the things that God created, right, raw agave, um, there's fruit. Fruit is a great natural sweetener, all right? So there's things like that. You still can have desserts. Um, so you eat the sugar. It affects your blood sugar, okay? Um, so your levels start to spike. Your pancreas has to dump more insulin, okay, naturally. Um, and, and that process can stop, and there's reasons for that as well. Um, three... Your blood sugar starts, starts to level off and fall, I mean, I mean, fall rapidly. And then you start having hunger and cravings. And it's very, it, this is a real thing. And sugar, the biggest thing with sugar is it affects your um, immune system. Now, it was interesting. When we used to go up to um, Hallelujah Acres, there's a corporate office in, plant, in um, North Carolina. The requirement to go to these minister conferences was that you had to have no sugar in your body for three months. When you sit in church and you watch people, what, what happens? You know, if the, you're the, antsy. The bouncing leg. If you're antsy, it's usually because of sugar. Um, when you, we went up to North Carolina, we would look row after row. Nobody's legs were going. You know, amazing. Just, just an observation. But sugar, sugar just does affect us. Um, it causes inflammation. So if you have problems with body parts, the sugar will cause inflammation and then cause you pain, which is arthritis, basically, or bursitis. By the way, David and I, in the 80s, uh, we were in a potato sack race. <laughs> And he's very aggressive and competitive. He's quiet, but I call him my gentle giant because <laughs> he's, he's, he's a cool guy. And, but I'll tell you, you don't want to be in a potato sack race with him. I'm 5'3", he's six foot. Okay, it doesn't work well. <laughs> and he aggressively jumps forward, our legs twisted up, and he fell on top of me, so 200 pounds on top of me, and I tore my rotor cuff. And he's trying to lift me up by my arm and say, come on, we got to win. <laughs> you know, let's go, let's go, you know. Um, horrible. Um, I was very embarrassed. I went to the emergency room again, and um, I said to the, uh, the doctor, he says, how did this happen? And he was so good looking, and I said, I jumped out of an airplane, and <laughs> I didn't roll right. <laughs> no, I, I did, rec I, I took that back. I told him the truth. <laughs> but, so sugar, sugar is just one addiction. When you go on the Daniel Fast, usually within, within the three weeks, you might not crave anymore. It depends how bad that addiction is. Uh, it, and it's a head thing. Okay, but, but I'm telling you, it, it is destructive to your body. The little Coke thing up here, let's see, does this work? Yeah, well, no, that doesn't work, does it? 
you tell them the three stages of what happened in Daniel's house? Not yet. Okay. Uh, but the Coke up here, look, look at the sugar. Those are those little cubes, and it just shows you how much sugar is in there. We don't see it, so we don't think about it, right? Okay, spiritual disease. Most of you have heard through Pastor Nick about Henry Wright. There is really something to the spiritual disease. Uh, God gave us an immune system to maintain the health in our body. It's capable of fighting uh, invaders, um, bad food choices, toxins, pollution, um, all of it. And the, uh, it, it's time that we start to look at the fear, the resentment, anger, hatred, um, hatred of self or others, sin, unforgiveness, bitterness. Week one, this is what you're going to experience. I'm really not feeling very well. I think this healthy food's making me sick. <laughs> I'm so tired. All I want to do is sleep. I'm spending so much time in the bathroom, okay? Week two, this is what we hear every year for what, about nine years now or something. Um, wow, I feel great. <laughs> I have so much energy. My digestion's better. I seem, um, some of my aches and pains have gone away. I'm losing weight. I'm sleeping better. I don't need naps. And my belly bloat is gone, all right? Week three, this is what we hear. I can't wait till this fast is over. <laughs> I can't wait to go back and eat whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, it, it's really, it, <laughs> we are human, all of us, just like the cookies. We're, we're human. Um, the benefits. Fasting helps you lose weight, speeds up your metabolism, improves uh, your immune function, promotes clearer skin, Improves insulin sensitivity. You will actually, um, you will actually be able to either reduce insulin or get off it completely. All right, it's ha it's it's one of the easiest things that we've dealt with. Improves hunger. Uh, you won't be craving so many things, okay? Because th that's what this cleansing process does. Fasting improves your brain function. That's where hearing from God's going to come in better. You're going to hear from God better. Um, your spiritual awareness, it cleanses your body, your mind, and your soul. Your ability to cope with stress. Do we have, does anybody here not have stress? I think we all do in one way or another, whether it's home or whether it's your husband or whether it's, you know, it can be anything, right? It can be relationship. It can be work. Work can be difficult, all right? It can be um, life changes. It can be God redirecting your life. <laughs> um, increased hydration. If we could tell you one thing that you can do to help your body is drink water. Not water with coffee in it. Not water with tea in it. Water with lemon in it would be good. Um, but that, honestly, will help things work better because you flush the toxins out of your system. And not only flushes the toxins, but we're made up of 70% water. Our brains are 90% water. We need that hydration for ourselves to work properly. And, if, you know, if, if we've got worn out, dried out cells, then they're not going to move very well. Now, you've all heard laughter is a good medicine, right? Um, we've been talking for quite a while. What I would like you to do is stand up in your seat. I just want you, um, well, stand up by your chair, <laughs> and I want you to just stretch a little. Okay, you ready for this? We, we had someone trying to teach everybody to sing, so we're going to see how well you laugh. Okay? <laughs> okay, well, we're going to laugh, but I want you, after we're done, keep laughing until we tell you to stop, but I want you to see how you feel after that laughter. That's right. Okay? I want you to laugh with the biggest belly laugh you have. Okay? So, I mean, and I want you to look at your neighbors as you laugh because they look funny. 
Sherry then, told me when we first did this that I, I was downright embarrassing to her. Yes, he was very embarrassing. So I wouldn't use the mic too loud because you're loud enough as it is. So let's go. Laugh. <laughs> Settle you down can a little have bit. a seat. Now, how many of you feel a tingling? That is called endorphins. That's, we need more of that. Watch our children. They're very funny, okay? <laughs> Laugh more. Be with friends. You know, when you're with friends, you know, you can be yourself. And you can laugh at each other. Oh, we do. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> You know, yeah. throughout the Bible, uh, God's telling us to, uh, he wants peace and rest for us. What is the one word that you can think of that we hear the most through congregation? Or two words, if you want to put it that way. Shabbat shalom. And that shalom is God's peace. Yeah. Okay? When you don't have that peace, if you're harboring angerness, bitterness, resentment, all these things are acidic to the body, okay? When our body's acidic, it doesn't heal well. Okay, that's an environment for disease, okay? When you release it to the Lord and have that peace, even through laughter, okay, your body can now function properly. If we've given it the right fuel, healing comes about. But that, that laughter that we just did, she talked before about it being seven months before I had any relief. That's what happened at one of the uh, meetings we went to. His uh, motivational speaker got up there and had us do that. And I looked at Sherry after mm. that and says, the MS symptoms are gone. Now that yep. lasted for 24 hours. Right after hours. that laughter. That lasted for 24 hours. Then they started getting it back again. But we knew that if it happened <clears throat> for 24 hours, now it can happen for 48 hours. It can happen, and it did. Praise the Lord, it did. And it's all about obedience, I think. Mm -hmm. Fasting creates a unique awareness of God's presence. You will become more in tune to what he is saying to you. Um, as the toxins are removed from your brain, your spiritual antennas are going to go up. You will think clear. You're going to feel better. Um, we become more sensitive to God's will, his desires, and his plans when we become clean inside. It's all, it's all about cleaning inside. Um, best time for addictions to be broken. Fasting provides a time for deeper spiritual self-examination and reorientation. Sometimes God redirects us. David, are going, David and I are going through a redirection right now. Um, hasn't been the most fun thing in the world. <laughs> but we're supposed to <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> um, the owner's manual. He gave us a Bible. He told us that everything we need is in there. That's later. He, he gave us instructions in Genesis 1 and 2. Godly trust, fresh air. Now, sometimes that fresh air is hard to get out there. Daily exercise. We're supposed to be moving the body. If you don't move the body, you're going to lose the ability to move. Just like, you know, if when arthritis happens, you, your, your hands start to not work the right way. Okay, maybe your legs. And what most people do when they start to hurt, what do they do? They stop moving. But if you go to the hospital and you break something or you're in a car accident or something, what do they do? They put you in rehab and they start moving your, your, your body because they know it's good for you. When I was young, the first half of my life I spent in hospitals. I was sick all the time. Um, outside of that accident, I have not had to go to the hospital anymore. But as a child, I was sick all the time. Um, and I can remember going, and they would, after a surgery, they'd keep me there for at least a week. 
and I wasn't supposed to move, I wasn't supposed to do anything. And so then it took a lot more with stomach surgeries and things like appendicitis to get your body moving again, right? Because they didn't move me right away. Um, proper rest, we need to be sleeping. God talks about rest all the time. We're not sleeping right, or we're not going into that REM sleep. When you clean the body out, you will sleep better. Drinking lots of water, I mentioned. Temperate means staying away from the things that are bad. Doesn't mean you can't ever have these things, but it does mean that try to limit them, okay? We're not saying that you have to be vegan just during the Daniel fast, but you know, just Choose more living foods. We have the king's diet versus God's diet. Your body does not function well on white bread, sugar, flour, processed foods, the chemicals, the GMOs. It's not God's design. It's like man's trying to make the food better, right, than God did. He's not. He, he's not going to. Um... The king's diet is usually rich in fats, oils, sugars, meat, and overindulgences. There's an experiment you can do. We talk a lot about live food versus dead food. A lot of people will eat cooked carrots and say, well, I got my veggies for the day. Now, what we're after is the life-sustaining, immune-building enzymes the life force of the food. If you take a cooked carrot and you plant it, whether it's steamed, it's microwaved, it, whatever it is, and you plant it, is it going to grow? No, it's not, because it's made up of cells. But when we cook it, whatever method we use, we kill those cells. So what happens is do you get nutrition from it? You get some. You get vitamins, you get minerals, antioxidants, okay? But you don't get the life force. So those cells that duplicate at 300 million a minute, they're not going to duplicate healthier cells unless you eat the carrot raw. If you cut the end off of that carrot and you plant it, it is going to grow. All right? This is the acidosis cycle. If you take a look at the alkaline food, foods, all right? What's in common? What do you see? The biggest, it stands out like a big sore thumb. They're all green. If you look at the acidic foods, the, they're all kind of different, browns, not, not really very healthy looking. We say if you can stick to like 70, 75% raw foods, whether it's through juicing or through um, smoothies, Okay, there is, before I forget, there is going to be some Daniel Fast recipes out on the informational table, one per family, uh, if you're interested, okay? There's some really good recipes out there that'll help you. But most of us eat too many of the cooked foods. Juicing is the number one credit we give to him getting well. He drank six to eight eight-ounce glasses of juice a day. He was on the road at the time, so he had to eat in restaurants. So what happens is he had to pay $40 a day to get his juice because he didn't have a juicer. One time he brought it in his hotel room. <laughs> we did what we had to do to get well because God told me in that hospital, I will raise him from that bed of illness. How many of you are sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yeah, I mean, isn't it awful? I, <laughs> it's not good. Um, and you have a part in this. You, you can help yourself feel better. If you can't tell, David and I are very passionate about this because we know it works. It's not a popular message. We've been kicked out of churches. <laughs> okay? I'm not kidding. Okay? <laughs> um, it, the, it, it's just not a popular message. You know, you don't want to mess with your food. You are so inspiring to me. <laughs> Okay, um, but look at the juices. Look at how pretty they are. Now, somebody looking at the green one probably says, oh, green, you know, it, it can't be. But honestly, they're delicious, okay? Um, I'm going to skip through a couple of these. God's plan, he gave us clean food, 
and he gave us unclean food. Do you think that there's a reason he told us why pork? We should not eat pork? They're real. Do a study on what happens with the pig. The, um, can I have a little bit more time? A few more minutes? All right, we'll, we'll try to rush it through. Um, so God created us. And then he said, this is the food you shall eat. And we need to pay attention. You can go to Leviticus, and you will be able to, to read what those rules are. Interesting. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. We'll so are our fruits and vegetables. Tomatoes, if you cut it and slice it, and you look at it, it's got four chambers. So does our heart. And it's good for the heart. The mushroom. It looks like a little ear, okay? And it's full of vitamin D. It will keep your hearing strong. It is a fungus. Some people can't have it. Um, but So take vitamin D supplements. <laughs> um, the kidney beans. The kidney beans are good for your kidneys. Your kidneys is a flushing organ. The um, sweet potato looks like the pancreas. The avocado looks like the womb, okay? It helps cholesterol, blood pressure, and sugar. Um, the heart, the brain, anti-aging. The eye, look at the carrot. Everybody's, you've probably heard that carrots are good for your, your eyesight, right? Look at it. You, it looks like the eye. And the walnut is good for your brain. Ginger is good for your stomach. This is a whole new picture of what you look like inside. <laughs> Cauliflower is good for your lungs. Anybody know what that is? Leeks. Okay, so leeks are good for um, the first part of your digestion. Eggplant, good for the kidney. Um, there's your ginger for your stomach. Bet you didn't know you looked like that inside. <laughs> Did you ever see a fat animal in the kingdom? <laughs> Some of our dogs and cats, maybe. <laughs> yes, our domestic dogs and cats we do see, but we feed them. We, what do we feed them? Our food, okay? So um, these two are racing each other to the big M. <laughs> but the reason you don't see that is because they eat the diet designed for them. If we ate more of the diet dined for us, designed for us, we would do better. Whoops. Real quick. <laughs> Man's law versus God's law. She, she likes this one. This is God's law, right? Okay, everything that we need for law is in this Bible. Everything. But the... Conventionally, you go out there, we have to go to a lawyer. They don't want the law, they want to go to a lawyer. You go to the lawyer's office, books after books after books, 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 okay? A man trying to do what God has done in the book, okay? The, um, and it's ever-changing. So, you know, I'm going to stick with this law. All right. So are we living in the end times? Yeah. We absolutely are. And I feel that God has caused, has caused Dave and I, he's given us this passion for this, to go out into our churches and edu educate our people on why they're sick. They don't know why they're sick. Okay? They don't, they don't study Torah. They... they um, they're misled, all right? So many people, when they would come to us, they would ask us, you know, I, I don't understand. I thought I ate healthy. I thought I ate healthy too. But the whole Daniel fast, you know, our passion is to make you guys recognize that every time you eat, you have a choice. You can choose the road to wellness or you can cho choose the road to curses and 
you know, you know like sickness Pat, is a curse to Pastor me. Pastor Nick said earlier that we are body, mind, and spirit. And we can be deficient in any one of those areas or any combination of all of them. Okay, so we have to, we have to visit each one of those areas and clean up that, our temple. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. We were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The closer our food choices resemble God's original diet, the healthier we're going to be. 